Go back again for, for part four. Yeah, he basically made one of the best streamers out there. And um, he only used about, I think, $1,000 on that. So uh, that's pretty impressive. And of course, he has some good filtering for his um, network, which of course does not run with Wi-Fi. Um, apparently, he runs some kind of HDMI sound thing. Very weird. Of course, top of that, everything is perfectly matched. He has some kind of a weird room correction thing where he isolates a part of the frequency and removes that from the uh, stereo speakers over to uh, some, some other surround speakers. So that also creates a, a really good, impressive uh, difference. But now here is something that I also think is a huge part of him having such a good sound is that he has two foot power cables on everything and usually people in the hi-fi world I, I think they have uh what is that two meters it's like six foot yeah six foot um power cables and when you have six foot power cables then you start listening to the the signature of the power cables but if you are able to bypass that in a high quality way by using two foot power cables with for example futek ncf ncf uh, plugs if you, if you if you can get away with that you will get into a sound that is incredibly good um, so I suggest trying to do that, uh, if you can at all. So just to, uh, give you a conclusion. Yes, a hundred, uh, a $10,000 Yamaha receiver can potentially under extremely good and almost lucky conditions beat, uh, for example, hundred dollar, hundred thousand uh, dollar, audio node or Negra amplifier, which is some of the best in the world. But, but again, it requires so much time and money and energy that you can easily spend uh, one hundred thousand dollars on, on creating that environment so is that really worth it do you want to use that time on it i mean personally i don't want to do that but i'm just glad as a as a guy sitting at, at the side being able to to watch this uh seeing that become possible because i've, I've never i've never seen a yamaha Beats a Negra spectral or an audio note uh, amplifier, and it's simply because those better amplifiers simply, even if you buy the, the best equipment out there, it usually does not run at anything near a 95% uh, efficiency. It usually only runs at around 20, 30, 40 if you're really good at uh, doing what you're doing. So just just to give you that inspiration for your own system own system here so and another last thing here is what is it that really creates the, the best sound the, the secret that the uh, or secrets that the industry doesn't want you to know this is crucial okay if you can just do this this will solve most of your audio problems in the world so um, it's not so much about the new technologies that, that come with time, like, for example, upsampling or new power internally or all, all kinds of thingamajigs that they uh, advertise. It's basically about having a very short signal path and converting uh, a signal uh, as little as possible without boosting it. The more original you have a signal, on a high level with uh, high quality parts, the better the sound. It's 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 it sounds stupid, but it's as simple as that. So having only around 50, 50 parts versus a normal amplifier that has two to five hundred uh, parts makes a huge difference in sound. That that constrained uh, what do you call it handcuff effect that you have, for example, when you're listening to uh, Macintosh or Pass Labs or, or other brands like that, you have this thing fixing the sound 
creating separation, creating this cool effect, but it never really lets fully go of the sound. You, you, once you've been an, an audiophile for some time, you start noticing that the music becomes flat, it becomes boring, it becomes uninteresting. Even, even gear like Spectral and Nagra on a Wilson audio speaker is even slightly boring. And it's, it's because of all this filtering, all of this correct measurements and all of these mechanical things that are in the signal. Yes, they solve our problems. Yes, you can measure them. But the less you can have that in your system, the more, the shorter the signal the higher the quality parts, the the better the sound uh, you can have, the, the more it fully lets go of the sound. So um, it's basically just to tell you out of that. So uh, point three here. So it's a combination of high highest quality parts and lower, lowest signal, uh, shorter signal. And um, I would say that around 99% of the gear on the market only uses a uh, a rating of one to three in quality out of uh, 10 on a scale so <clears throat> you're basically only having parts that are 10 to 30 percent of the total potential of uh, what can be in inside of your uh, equipment so it sounds kind of nutty but yeah um and once you get up to this top audio note gear, you start using parts that are like five, six, seven, eight, stuff like that out of 10, you know? And it's understandable that most manufacturers don't do this because it's the difference between something co costing um, half a dollar or uh, a part maybe costing 10 or 20,000 uh, dollars, you know? So that's just how the game works. And of course you need a, a good design, but basically most of the, uh, most of the inventions out there, most of the equipment is basically a race of getting cheap components in an efficient design to create a better sound and then documenting that in a way so they can sell you that product. So yeah, that, that's how the game works. So just to uh, go back on that, the thing that will create the best ever sound in the world is usually point to point wiring, triode, amplifier, not many parts. And you have to know with triode amplifiers is that usually when people make uh, companies make uh, triode amplifiers they use a cheap design they use cheap tubes they usually have a couple of hundred connections and they usually have some kind of uh, metal combination of metal uh, copper in a low quality uh, connector like caps uh, electrolytes and stuff like that and and trust me that triode uh, technology can can actually be a lot better if you took your uh, Chinese triode amplifier that probably only cost like a thousand dollars and then you change that with something that was like uh, fifty thousand dollars you know um, and that's also why I want to say that the the best amplifier in my opinion the one that beats everything in the world given the right conditions is the audio notes Maishu Tone Master Silver Phono Signature. That is the best ever I've ever heard. And it's also one of the best um, LP vinyl uh, rias uh, that I've built in. It has an incredibly short uh, circuit with very few parts, and the parts are in a class that you will never ever. Uh, C in another amplifier. Yes, the um, audio note auto uh, signature is also a, a pretty close con contender. Very different type of sound, but um, I, I even have audio note uh, auto, but not the signature, which is very expensive. 
I mean, it, it's 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 a bit more forward. It's a bit more in your face. It's a bit more. I don't know. It, it, it's just slightly different. It's a bit difficult to describe. And then, the, of course, you can't mention the top without having mentioned the audio note Ongaku integrated amplifier, which is the official best amplifier in the world and also a hell of a lot more expensive. And and yeah, to some degree, probably has a bit more grunt. It's a bit bigger in, in soundstage. It has uh, probably a bit more uh, power, but I mean, I'd, I'd rather prefer having the, the Maishu Tone Master, which is like a third of the price for basically the same sound. And I actually think that the Tone Master has a bit more intimate and, and, and real and personal sound. Uh, I could be wrong, but that's the impression that I got. So why not go for an integrated uh, audio note Maishu Tone Master? I mean, it, it is basically the best amplifier in the world, of course you will hear it at a show where you probably only will hear 10% of what it actually can, can perform like. But that is the very, very, very best of the best, officially. Um, yeah. Those three amplifiers. And, um, and of course, like in the point three here, you need a really good coupling of, of parts. Um... Because if you have a really good part, like like let's say that you have a resistor, you have the best resistor, 10 out of 10 uh, in the world. If you put that in an amplifier that's only has a, t a 2 out of 10 rating, you know, it's going to attract a hell of a lot of noise. And I actually did this once, uh, several times actually, on, on, I performed some tweaks on my equipment and I, and I couldn't understand how the hell when i when i go five classes up in a resistor and in a capacitor why isn't it sounding a hell of a lot better and to some degree it did sound a hell of a lot better but it just wasn't stable enough it was a bit noisy and that and that's the problem it attracts a lot of noise when you have a super component in a not so good for example amplifier dac cd player whatever so you need to balance that out and it sounds a lot easier than it actually is but most board designs in the world are made in such a bad way that you cannot put components that are the same uh, specification um, at, a, at a very much higher level without it attracting a lot of noise so usually when you do an upgrade you should only do one two or maybe three classes uh if you want to do like a resistor upgrade or a condensator or, or whatever if you go for something that's five or ten classes better you can get in trouble so it actually becomes unstable and uh, a bit harsh sounding and uh, we, we don't want that so it's just to let you guys know on that um and, and yeah, and th th this is also a very important um, piece of information. One of the things that also makes audio notes so, so fantastically great is that they don't have the traditional filtering that most equipment have. So basically most equipment is made with crap parts and they use some kind of a sophisticated way of filtering the sound. Like Hegel, they have their own patented way of filtering the sound, which is better than most um, brands out there. And, and, and yeah, you, you, you can hear that, that it's a pretty good way of filtering the sound, but the proper way to do that is to, to go basically all in saying that, okay, we're gonna put components in this amplifier. We're gonna make the whole thing just ridiculously uh, expensive. We're gonna use the best parts, and because we're using the best parts, we can then use fewer parts. And because we are then using fewer parts and it's still some of the best parts in the world, we can, if we're really smart, not filter the sound, okay? So generally when, 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 you're, when you're getting into this part of, of hi-fi, um, all brands will convince you that you need to filter your noise, you need to filter your noise, you need to get rid of the noise. And to some degree they're right. I mean, mostly they are right. You, you wanna get rid of noise. The problem is that 
most manufacturers get rid of noise by introducing some kind of a cheap signature so you're basically listening to your music via another mechanical thing that's that's helping you so you don't want to do that if you want the very very best sound in the world you don't have any filtering uh, at all in the amplifier itself you have some just some ridiculously high quality uh, transformers like uh, audio notes transformers that cost like five or ten thousand dollars per piece you have that in there then you have some condensators that probably cost like a thousand dollars per piece in that uh, amplifier and then you have some electrolytes that also probably cost i don't know thousand dollars and you have some resistors that probably cost i don't know hundreds two hundred three hundred dollars per piece and then you have some wiring that matches the the transformers and having all this together just creates the most beautiful uh, real human-like sound that you could ever imagine so it's just a totally different game i mean you can do it this other way that these other manufacturers do like negra spectral that that are best at doing it in this other way but it, it, it you have to choose your religion so either you're going audio note which is like basically the most real sound that you can have but it potentially attracts a lot of noise because you have to pair it with a lot of other stuff that isn't uh at the same level so if you go for audio note i suggest going all in audio note on every part cables so and so and never mix an audio note system with some kind of other brands pre-amplifier that will usually get you in a lot of trouble and never use an audio note speaker in a room that has a lot of glass or a very active floor that will bounce off the waves of the floor or if you have a very low loft or if you have like in like i don't know 10 to 20 meters from the back of your speakers to the to the to the back of your room you know that's also going to suck out a lot of bass and a lot of voluptuousness uh, of the sound and and, and kind of take the pressure away so you're only gonna listen to uh, treble and uh, mid-range which is gonna suck um, so it's difficult I'm just saying choose your religion if you're choosing this other way where, where you're going for uh, filtering good um, then choose a really good brand like YBA Abyss Sound or some of the best uh, in that direction uh, in, in transistor direction then it's Negra or spectral then you have basically the best of that type of sound with all the intelligent filtering and stuff like that but it's at an extremely high level compared to for example a hegel or even lower um, uh, macintosh or whatever um so yeah and um this last point here is the point of reference that that you have also means a hell of a lot so to what you've heard under those certain conditions affect your judgment so if everything that you've heard is up to group c of brands then it's easy to think that that gear is the best in the world if you haven't heard something that's better than the uh, the brands i mentioned above that was in the the group c of brands so um if that's your point of reference that for example you've only heard uh macintosh ear equipment and stuff like that then that's in your reality that's going to be the best um so uh, once you get out of that start listening to this this really good equipment oh my god are you in trouble then it's going to be like going from a Volkswagen uh, Passat uh, car or an Audi A3 to something like uh, a Bugatti you know <laughs> it just it's on a whole different level so I hope this this information uh, help you guys and um, yeah write some comments in uh, below and I want to hear that. Uh, what do you think about this? What What is your experience as a user?
you do you maybe have a different priority or what you consider is the best brand so remember to subscribe